What's up, navigation traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, January 10th. We're going to review all the trade alerts, all the current positions, uh, just for pro members here. Before we do, let's jump into the community and talk about who got caught being hot. This week goes to our fellow trade hacker, just joined the community uh, within the last week or so. Didn't waste any time jumping in, posting trade ideas, uh, answering other members' questions, just adding great value. So J-Rod, nice work. Keep up the heat. You got caught being hot. All right, let's jump over to the alerts. Uh, and actually, before we jump into the alerts, let's just take a look at the markets. Um, starting with uh, with SPX, the, the weekly expected move. The market's going to close here in about 10 minutes. Um, so this is uh, kind of where we're at for, for next week. Um, now the uh, I mentioned er on a video earlier, it's been a long time since we've closed outside the expected move, and once again this week we came up yesterday we tagged it we opened above it but now the market is down uh, S and P is down about twelve points on the day so right back into that expected move so it looks to be another close inside that expected move. Um, and so just this continued muted grind higher. Um, and so hopefully we get a little bit more volatility next week, uh, but we will see. So going through the alerts, had a lot of alerts today actually. And so, but let's go back and start with uh, Monday. And so the first trade on the, let's see, the sixth was a closing adjusting trade that we did in forward slash GC, which is gold. So price moved higher. We closed out that untested side, closed out the put vertical side of that iron condor, and um, and we're still holding the call side. So if we take a look at gold, we've got two different pieces here. We've got the full iron condor as well. Uh, but let's just first look at just that uh, just that call vertical side, you can see price is just outside the range. So we need a little bit more movement down to get back in. We've got 46 days, so we've got a lot of time here. Uh, whoops, let's go back to that. i uh, got a lot of time here. And then we've also got the other full iron condor, uh, which is pretty well centered. So we might actually take this off early next week. Um, we're getting to a point where we could we could book the profits in that, and then we'll keep on that call vertical side, and then we may look to add another centered iron condor. We'll probably let price move around a little bit before we do that. Uh, hopefully, the direction is down, and then that will help our, our short call vertical, but we'll see what happens. So that's gold. Uh, let's see, next one, rolling adjusting trade in Apple. So we've got this long put vertical on in Apple, and this is absolutely the wrong stock to pick for the short delta obviously when we put it on it was uh you know apple was uh getting a lot of heat with the, especially with the trade wars and things like that so it appeared to be a good option for short delta but that has certainly not happened uh but we are continuing to keep this on so we rolled this out to feb and so let's take a look at apple you can see it's out of the range again i mean this this thing just continues to be strong just continues that march higher. Uh, it does have earnings coming up on 128, and uh, so we'll be holding this through earnings. Um, but uh, just an FYI, earnings is on the 28th. Next trade, opening trade in booking. So we put on a new iron duck in booking uh, at that point with 11 days to expiration. So let's take a look at booking. It's it's gone higher since we put this on, so it's run up the beak a little bit. So prices up here. Uh, we still have, let's see, 118. Yeah, oh yeah, I was trying to get filled on this today to just get out, but um, we were having to pay up quite a bit more than, we wanted to book that beak profit or pretty close to it, the 170 bucks, but I wasn't able to get filled anywhere close. So we'll, we'll uh, hold it to next week. You can see we've got just about a 10% chance of it getting back to that duck head area, back to that max profit area. So no need to hold this for another full week. We'll go ahead and, and book that unless price comes down uh, and gives us a be better probability. But at this point, we'll probably just book the beak and move on. Next trade, opening trade in Google. We've got a, a new reverse iron duck on in Google. Now, price has come higher since we put this on, so it's right in the duck head. Uh, this expires in those Jan 17 options, so that's next Friday. 
uh, seven days from today. Uh, so f hopefully price can kind of hang out in this area and uh, potential for a duck head. We'll see. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in Natty Gas. So we rolled one set of our short strangles in Natty Gas from, from the Feb with 20 days to expiration out to March with 48. Kept the strikes exactly the same. Uh, this is that inverted strangle that we've just been managing uh, for a few months now. So let's take a look at Natty Gas. Uh, and here it is. So we've got, it's moved up a little bit since we put this on, uh, since we did the roll. And so we could just use a little bit of upside movement in Natty Gas. Uh, one of the alerts later here, we did close out our other piece and, and booked a profit on that piece of the trade. Uh, so if price kind of continues to hang around here, we will look to add to this again by centering another strangle and just continue to collect more credit and work our way back to profits in Natty. Next trade, opening trade in Tesla. So we did a, another reverse iron duck in Tesla. Some good call skew going on, uh, giving us the opportunity to put on some of these reverse ducks. Uh, Tesla made a, a big move higher, was all the way up here into the duck head and then reversed and has come right back to pretty close to where we put it on. Um, you know, I did, th there was a comment in the community. I just wanted to point out, you know, one of the members, I can't remember who it was, uh, but, you know, when price was way up here, uh, you know, they're like, hey, you know, if, if price makes the same amount of movement, we're already going to be at our uh, our break even. So should we close this out? And the answer is no. You know, we don't we don't trade based on if something might happen. You know, if the stock moves, you know, another one standard deviation, if the stock makes a move of X, uh, so should we close out before that happens? You just you don't know. And that's that's exactly the point. I mean, price was way up here and then Tesla's down almost a percent today, moved all the way back down here. If we take a look at a chart, so this is what we were looking at here. Um, you know, pr price made this big move up uh, on this day here, on this day here, this big green bar, and then, you know, was up here and, and, and they were getting a little bit nervous about it continuing higher. Uh, but just when you think it's going to do one thing, it does the other. So you got to stick to the probabilities, stick with the mechanics. You know, we, we put these mechanics in place because we've found that it's, you know, the most profitable way to do it over time. Now, is it always going to work exactly and, and max get your max best profit on every single trade? No. In fact, I mean, we saw that on Roku today. We saw that on Shopify today. You know, not every trade is going to work out, but over time, the probabilities play out. And what you don't want to do is getting caught in that game of, oh, on this trade, I'm going to use my gut and I'm going to, I'm going to think it's going to do this. So I'm going to manage it differently. And, and next time I'm going to use my gut and manage it differently. And then next time I'm going to be mechanical. You got to stay consistent every time. Otherwise you're going to continue to shoot yourself in the foot. And worst of all, here's, here's, here's probably the worst part of doing that is you're going to go by your gut and you're going to be right. And then you're going to think, I'm a genius, you know, and you may not even say that consciously, but subconsciously you're thinking I can out, I can, I can outdo the probabilities. I can beat the probabilities with my gut instincts. And the problem is you can't. Okay. And so it might work a couple times and you might get a little bit cocky and then, and then you're going to get slapped. <laughs> the markets love to slap you if you don't play right. So we just stick with the mechanics, stick with the probabilities and, um, you know, and, 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 and be consistent. That's the key thing. You know, if you want to, you know, on these like iron ducks, for example, if you want to, if you want to close these out one day to expiration, instead of waiting till expiration day, cool. I have absolutely no problem with that. Um, but just be consistent about it. You know, don't one time, you know, exit early the next time, wait, just, uh, your, your instincts, uh, are typically going to lead you the wrong way uh, in trading, and so it's 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 not like other businesses or other other ventures you might uh, might be involved in where certain things work. Trading, you got to stick to mechanics. All right, next trade, closing adjusting trade in Nat Gas. So that's the one I talked about. That other piece, that other short strangle, we booked thirty percent of max profit on that one. And then rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. So we rolled one of our short call verticals from Jan with eight days out to Feb with 43. So if we take a look at the Qs and the market's getting ready to close here in about five seconds. So you may hear a bell in the background. So here's, here's the Q. So we have both of these. There's the closing bell. 
Uh, we have both of these out in uh, Feb now. So we've got uh, we've got this one, which is out of range. So uh, we've now in Feb we've got we've got some time. We've got 42 days to expiration. So we're going to hold this for now. And then the one that we just rolled is this one here. So we've gone down just a tiny bit since we put it on, but just well in range uh, where we want it. Looking for some more downside to benefit that piece. Next trade, closing trade in Shopify. So we closed our iron duck in Shopify, booked a beak profit on that trade. Price ran all the way up, had very little chance of getting back. So we just booked that beak profit. Next trade, closing trade in Shopify. So this was our reverse iron duck. Uh, we closed this one out today, ended up taking a loss. This one was was hanging out right on the edge of the um, of the upper break even. Um, and excuse me, the lower break even. This is a, a reverse duck. And so um, no, I'm yeah, I'm sorry, the upper break even because we had no risk to the downside. And so on this one, uh, price continued higher in Shopify. Shopify, this thing has been just a, a beast to the upside. Uh, let's take a look here at the chart. Uh, now it did end up coming down. I did see a post in the community of someone who was patient and and held this one closer to expiration and price did come back down. So they were able to book kind of a break even or a small profit. We ended up just closing it out. It hit our it hit our exit point. So we just we just bailed on it, um, which is that's mechanically what we what we do. So uh, ended up taking a loss on that one. Shopify definitely owes us some money, so we may dip back into that well next week. Uh, but it got us this time, so Shopify, we're coming for you. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in ZW. So we closed out the put vertical side of our iron condor in wheat. This was the one that had 14 days to expiration, so we've, we had two different iron condors in wheat. Uh, breached our upper break even, uh, very little value left in that put vertical, so we just closed it out. So let's take a look at wheat. So we've got, uh, let's see, this is the one. Let's take a look at that call vertical we still have. So we need a little bit of downside movement to get back into range here. You know, if if we don't, you know, going into expiration week, so we've got 14 days left. If we get into expiration week and it still hasn't gotten back into our range, so where we can close it for a profit, we'll probably just close it regardless. Uh, typically don't like to roll these just because, you know, it's not providing that short delta exposure. It's not, we don't have a necessarily a real directional bias in wheat. So we're just going to close that out. And then we've also got the other piece. We've also got the, um, uh, another full iron condor here where you can see it's pretty centered. If we get a little bit more theta decay action next week, we may close that one out. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Next trade, opening trade in AZO, AutoZone. So this is a uh, an iron, it, we did an iron duck here. This is a high price symbol. You can see it's trading over $1,000. Uh, so it's great from that standpoint from an iron duck. But I also mentioned open interest is really low in here. So keep your position size small. Um, you know, it's it's just tough to get filled. I, I typically don't use this in especially for alerts, just because it's, it is so illiquid. Now the market's closed here, so don't pay attention to that PL graph because that's not correct. But the, the bid ask spreads are a little bit wide. And if you look at the open interest, we did this one with seven days to expiration. You can see it's, it's, it's double digit, sometimes single digit on some strikes. So it's not great. You know, this isn't one that we want to use for kind of bread and butter. Uh, we ended up putting in an order and, and got filled at a decent credit. And so, we, you know, we're going to trade it. Uh, but it's definitely not our go-to trading vehicle. But we're just looking for, you know, doing our duck hunting, looking for additional options, and and the criteria fit and worked out. So uh, and we got filled. So we're we're in that trade. But don't feel bad if you don't take a trade like this uh, with with interest that low. It's just you know it's it, you got to work your order a little bit more. The bid ask spreads are a little bit wider than we like. It's, it's kind of a real borderline type symbol. But anyway, we are in the trade. And so we'll see what happens there. Next trade, opening trade in SPX. So we put on another iron duck in SPX. This one with 17 days to expiration. And actually, let me uh, let me get to another SPX alert here. Yeah, the ne very next one. So we opened uh, one with 17 days. And then this one had seven days left to expiration. Price had run up. And so we just closed that out for, for near beak profit. Uh, we wouldn't need to get out at $5 for kind of exactly at the beak we paid up five cents so we got it at 505 
but booked a big profit there and then threw this one, new one on. And so we've got... So we've got this one, which uh, the market just closed, so it expired today. So I'm gonna, um, after I get done recording this, I'll send out the alert. So by the time you view this, you'll have received the alert that this one expired, and we just booked that beak profit of 115. But the one that we just put on today with 17 days is this one here. And so you can see prices come down, you know, the market being down, prices come down a little bit since we put it on. Uh, but got a max profit of 625, beak profit of 125 on that one. So if we get some continuation to the downside, uh, we'll you know look to put another SPX duck on next week. Uh, you know, continue to ladder in and out of these things. Next trade, closing trade in rut. So did nice nice trade here. We had a, a weekly double calendar on. Price stayed fairly centered. It kind of bounced, I mean, it bounced around, it actually bounced around down to our uh, break even one time and then uh, bounced back up. But it was it was pretty, took very little heat. We were pretty centered for a lot of this, a uh, lot of this trade. And it's kind of bounced around here. So we ended up booking a nice profit on that one. And then lastly, closing trade in Roku. So this one was a little bit frustrating. This was one that we... We're dead center in the duck head, and then um, towards the end of the this afternoon, let me go to the chart, Roku. I know a couple people in the community uh, bailed on this one yesterday. Got at a better pricing than we did, but just had this move lower this afternoon and came all the way over to the kind of the edge of the, uh, of the short put. And so um, we didn't get a full duck head, which is what I was hoping. Uh, but we still booked a, a, a decent profit, like 250 ish dollars, I think it was. I can't remember exactly, but still a decent profit. Not the duck head I was looking for, but uh, we're out of that Roku position. We'll look to potentially uh, jump into another one. Implied volatility nice and high. Uh, earnings isn't for a while, so we've got some room to roam. Uh, so we'll look to put another potential duck on in Roku next week. Those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions here. Oil, we've got a duck in oil, and man, what a slide in oil after the whole Iran situation that's come down from almost 66 all the way down to 59 in just a matter of a few days. So we've got this iron duck, which is uh, centered right here in the duck head. So if we can stay in a little bit of a range here into next week, this one's got seven days, uh, five days. So uh, this one expires on Wednesday. So Hopefully we can get some good uh, good profits out of that one. Uh, ES, we've got this long put vertical. You can see prices hanging out just inside of our range here, looking for some downside to benefit that. I mentioned gold. I mentioned natty. Bonds, we've got two different uh, positions in bonds. One is this uh, 161 short straddle. So it was, a, it was a short strangle. We've adjusted it into a straddle. You can see prices is, is hanging out right here. Could use a little bit of upside movement on that piece to benefit us. And then this one is, uh, price is hanging out right here. Uh, price opened up lower and I was hoping we would just uh, book a profit of around 30 plus percent of max on this one this morning, but it moved up pretty quick. So we're just we're just holding on. Uh, if we get a little bit of downside movement, we will go ahead and book this one and then continue to manage the other one. So looking for price just to kind of ping pong around back and forth. And, you know, hopefully we can benefit on both of these. Wheat, I mentioned. Apple, I mentioned. Amazon, we've got an iron duck in Amazon. And this is the one. Uh, yeah, no, I did not mention this. So this has got about 22% chance. So we weren't looking to take this one off yet. Price is pretty far up the duck beak, but like I said, still about a 22% chance of getting back into that max profit area. So we'll hold on to this next week. And this one, we've got seven days. Yeah, seven days to expiration. So this expires next Friday. AZO I mentioned, booking I mentioned, DE, John Deere, we've got this short call vertical here, price is just outside the range, looking for some downside to benefit that. DIA, so we've got one of these in January, so we will potentially be rolling this here in the next week or so as we get down, this is seven days away, so yeah, next week for sure. We'll be rolling this out to extend duration, keep that short delta, hopefully we get a little downside movement before we do that. And then this one's already out in Feb, uh, so we're just holding this one for now. 
Google, I already mentioned that. IWM, we've got a, a long put vertical here. Price is hanging out inside the range here, just looking for some more downside to benefit that. I mentioned the Qs. SMH, we've got this short strangle. Almost at a point of uh, being able to take this off. Uh, just continuing to hold that for some more theta decay. Now we're still work working our way back to profits on this SMH trade. Uh, you know, if we get some a pop in implied volatility, we may consider adding to this. If not, we may just continue to roll it as we get closer down to 21 days expiration. But you can see we've got 42 still left, so we've got a lot of time. SPX, I already mentioned that one. SPY. So we've got a, a short call vertical that's uh, part of a previous iron condor. You can see prices just hanging out just outside the range. So we need a little bit of downside to get back in there. Uh, I mentioned Tesla. And then lastly, XLK. We've got this long put vertical just outside the range. So again, one of our short delta positions. Uh, just looking for that to, to go down to, to benefit us there. So that's it, my friends. Those are all the positions. Those are all the alerts. Everybody have a great weekend. And we'll see you here in the community next week.